Lagos Talks 91.3. Uh, President Mohamed Buhari yesterday approved extension of the ongoing currency swap by 10 days, moving the deadline from the 31st of January till the 10th of February 2023. President Buhari gave the approval at a meeting with the governor of the CBN, Godwin Emefile, urging more time, discretion and order to enable to to enable Nigerians successfully change their currencies to the redesigned notes and reduce the risk of loss, especially amongst the undeserved in rural areas. Briefing news been after a meeting with the president in Katsina State, the CBN governor had disclosed that a seven day grace period had been given by the president beginning from the tenth of February till the seventeenth of February to allow Nigerians deposit their old notes at the central bank after the February 10th deadline. 10-day extension of the deadline from January 31, 2023 to February 10, 2023 to allow for collection of more old notes legitimately held by Nigerians and achieve more success in cash swap in our rural areas, in our villages and, and communities after which all old notes outside the CBN loses their legal tender. A seven-day grace period beginning on February 10 to February 17, 2023, in compliance with Section 20, Subsection 3, and Section 22 of the CBN Act, allowing Nigerians to deposit their old notes at the CBN after the February deadline, when the old currency would have lost its legal tender status. We therefore appeal to all Nigerians. And that was the CPN governor. The Apex, Apex Bank governor further noted that the currency swap had achieved more than 75% success rate of the 2.7 trillion are held outside the banking system, with evident drop in rate of inflation, more stability of foreign exchange rates, and noticeable impact on security, especially in banditry and kidnapping figures. So far, and since the commencement of this program, we have, we have collected about 1.9 trillion naira, leaving us with about 900 billion to 1 trillion naira, and 1 trillion naira to be collected. To achieve this effective distribution of the new currency, the CBN has taken the following steps. A, we held several meetings with our deposit money banks and provided them with guidance notes on processes they must adopt in the collection of old notes and distribution of the new notes. Fielding questions from newsmen, the CBN governor has said excuse of security threats pushed by the Kano state governor. Abdullah Gandhiji had no bearing on the swap, whilst adding that any CBN staff or commercial banks found to be in breach of the policy will be sanctioned. The relationship between our own cash swap, which is our own job with our mandate, and the security issue being um, exposed by the Canon State Governor. So that is why I don't, I'm saying I don't want to join, to be joined in any argument with him. We just want to remain focused on our mandate and assignment. Oh, they, have, they have trackers. We have their numbers because they, they, have, they have been issued. Once we see these numbers, we will track them and we will, ex, we will, we will make public those that are... In the meantime, barely 48 hours after advising the President against going ahead with his scheduled visit to Kanu State today, Monday, the governor of Kanu State, Umar Ganduje, has made a U-turn, saying that the state is now prepared to receive him. Ganduje had, in an interactive session with critical stakeholders, revealed that his government had requested the president to postpone the trip, saying that the state was deeply concerned about the hardship principally induced by the ongoing cash swap from old to redesigned notes. The governor said the decision was taken to avoid any unforeseen circumstance. Despite Gandhi's objection, the president had, however, insisted on going ahead with the visit. Uh, however, after meeting with the president on Sunday, uh, Governor Gandhi affirmed that he, he led the delegation to Daura over the issue of the ongoing currency swap and was happy with the president. He assured us that uh, the time is extended and the quantity of Naira, new Naira, the quantity will increase 
so that the suffering of the people will be reduced. We informed him that uh, Kano is the most popular state in the federation and also the commercial nerve center of the northern part of, of Nigeria, uh, second to Lagos. But in terms of uh, cash transaction, Kano is much higher than Lagos because Lagos has gone far in terms of cashless, cashless society, cashless transaction. But uh, Kano State uh, being uh, comparatively, you know, uh, a, a rural place, so to say, uh, still we have 24 local government without banks. In the meantime, the House of Representatives at a committee on the redesign of three Naira notes has rejected a 10-day extension granted by the CBN for the swap. In a statement on Sunday, Chairman of the committee and the Majority Leader of the House, Al Hassan Adodugua, said the Green Chamber will proceed and sign an arrest warrant to compel the CBN governor to appear before the ad hoc committee. According to him, the new Naira redesign policy is capable of frustrating the forthcoming 2023 general elections. While insisting that the CBN must comply with sections 20, subsections 3, 4 and 5 of the CBN Act, Dogua described the extension as a mere political gimmick to further deceive Nigerians and worsen their economic and social livelihood. The Independent National Electoral Commission has further extended the deadline for the collection of the permanent voter cards, the PVCs, nationwide to the 4th of February. Its National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, who noted that the decision was made at the Commission meeting with the resident electoral commissioners at the weekend, said the Commission is encouraged by the progress made so far as more Nigerians troop out daily to collect their PVCs. Also noting that the extension was for the second time, Okoye added that collection time has also been extended by an additional two hours to start from 9 a.m. and end at 5 p.m., including Saturdays and Sundays. However, those engaged in double and multiple registrations should not bother visiting any of the Commission's offices as INEC did not print their PVCs. The Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, the NARD, has called for increased budget reallocations to the healthcare sector. To improve the quality of healthcare delivery in the country, its president, Dr. Innocent Oji, is speaking after the three-day National Executive Council NEC meeting of the association, said the increase should be to the tune of 15% annual budget reallocation, as this will be in line with the 2001 Abuja Declaration for Healthcare Financing in Africa, and global best practices. He said the NEC of the NARD also urged the Federal Ministry of Health to expedite action on checking brain drain by implementing the one-for-one -one policy on replacement of exited doctors and clinical staff, while calling on the chief medical directors of tertiary hospitals in the country to take responsibility for security in their various hospitals as the NARD would no longer continue to watch a members being assaulted by staff, patients, relatives or security operatives. The Nigeria Labour Congress, the NLC, has appealed to President Mohamed Buhari to direct payment of all withheld salaries of university workers in the country. NLC President Ayuba Waba, who made the appeal in a resolution reached at the end of the National Administrative Council of the Congress, urged the President to make the salaries available as a mark of goodwill. It will be recalled that due to no work, no pay policy of the federal government, the salaries of ASU and others were withheld for the period they were on strike. An articulated truck conveying a 20-foot container fell on a commercial bus at Udwelegba, Lagos, yesterday, Sunday, killing nine persons. Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Emergency Management Agency last summer, Dr. Olufemi Oke, or Saintolu, said a truck lost control while ascending the bridge and landed on the bus, which also was picking passengers from an undesignated position. Oke, or Saintolu, said after suspending the container load with the aid of last summer's forklift, an adult woman was removed alive and taken to the trauma center. However, the fatalities recovered comprised four adult males and three adult females and two children. 
Meanwhile, the state governor, Babajide Sonwolu, on behalf of the state government, sympathized with the families of those who died in the accident, while the government will continue to implement its transport master plan according to the governor, which has safety strategies for safer roads. A statement by the state commissioner for transportation, Frederick Goladende, said the accident will be thoroughly investigated to pre- prevent a reoccurrence. And now we look outside the country where the, the U.S. city of Memphis has disbanded the special police unit whose officers fatally beat a young black man after graphic video of the assault sparked widespread shock and outrage. The video, which shows five officers who are now charged with second-degree murder, repeatedly kicking and punching Tyre Nichols, a 29-year-old African-American Memphis resident, as he moans and calls out for his mother, triggered calls for police reform. The southern U.S. city have now announced it had deactivated the officer's special unit known as the Scorpion, which stands for Street Crimes Operation to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhoods, launched in 2021 to reduce illegal activity by assigning more police to high crime areas. On the business scene this morning, the Securities and Exchange Commission has urged the need for more investments, especially by the private sector in the commodities trading ecosystem. Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Ramido Yuguda, stated this during an interview on the recently commissioned 32 metric tons per hour Lagos rice mill in Imota, Ikorodu, Lagos State. Yuguda stated that the capital market expects to see more private sector investments in areas which need to support a commodities ecosystem like storage facilities and also increase investment in mechanized farming in commodities like rice, hibiscus flowers and others which are in high demand in other parts of the world. And lastly, sports. Novak Djokovic resumed his reign over Melbourne Park by winning a record-extending 10th Australian Open title on Sunday. It has become it has uh, come 15 years after hoisting it for the first time. As a 20-year-old in 2008, Djokovic had defeated Stefano Tsitsipas in a one-sided final match by winning 6-3, 7-6, 7-6, a rematch of the 2021 French Open decider. He used the victory at Rod Lava Arena to reclaim the world number one ranking and again deny Tsitsipas a maiden major title. The 35-year-old Djokovic's 22 Grand Slam triumph is now matching Rafael Nadal. Lagos Talks 91.3 News.